Hello and welcome to Life.ev, your weekly deep dive into values and entrepreneurship as India uh, entrepreneurship. Now, this is, we're doing this at a time when India is approaching a five trillion economy, dollar five trillion economy. I'm Ajit Panikar. I lead I lead Nova and Pure Blue, an air conditioning solutions company, and I'll guide you through the in through the intertwined paths of business growth and personal value creation. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m for transformative talks on balancing success and values in our lives. So join us at life.ev for insights on living and leading with purpose. And as usual, to help me unravel these complicated topics is Vivek. Hi, Vivek. Hey, Ajit. Hi. How are you doing? Good to see you again. <laughs> Absolutely fine. So to our viewers, Vivek Asrani is the driving force behind Kemo Fastener Company, a trailblazing company in the industrial fastener sector. What sets Vivek apart is his deep engagement with the exploration of values. Now, for close to four years, he has dedicatedly penned his reflections on this topic every week. These insightful thoughts are accessible on his website, vivekasrani.com. Additionally, Vivek has authored the book, One Day at a Time, Reflections from Times of Silence which further delves into his journey and insights. This thought-provoking read is available on Amazon, offering readers a chance to engage with his profound understanding of values and their role in both personal and professional realms. So join us as we delve into this rich discussion with Vivek on life.ev. So Vivek, today, our episode today is the power of one. Let's hear your thoughts on this. Ajit, let me start with one of my favorite stories. <clears throat> so there was this child who was walking on a beach and there were thousands of starfish that were washed on the beach. And if they didn't go back, they would be, you know, they would die. So this kid was picking up one at a time and throwing them back into the sea where a wise old man walks to this child and with a very knowing smile. He says, son, what are you doing? He says, you know, all these starfish are being washed to the beach. And I'm putting them back into the sea so that they don't die. So this wise old man, you know, looks at the beach, tells the child, he says, there are thousands of starfish on this beach. You think you're going to make any difference to them? So the child picks up the next starfish, throws it back into the sea and says, I made a difference to that one. And that, you know, when I heard the story, captured for me the essence of, the power of one. We, Ajit, are always faced with situations, challenges uh, in our control and very often out of our control, but which seem huge. And when we take a step back, very often we are all faced with that question that, you know, what difference does it make if I keep my street clean or I don't throw garbage on the street, or I pay my taxes honestly, or I do something in the right way, what difference is going to make? Just look at the whole system around me, right? So for me, power of one is really revisiting that paradigm and recognizing two things. One, that as individuals, we have a power, which even we are yet to discover. And therefore, our willingness and ability to even explore and even take the first step is absolutely necessary. The challenge is not how small we are in our minds and how big the problem is. The, the challenge is that we've already accepted defeat in our minds before even trying. So that's one part of it. The second aspect of the power of one is that Every journey starts with the first step. You know, it's said so often that a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. But that is absolutely true. It is very important for us to keep moving. And again, often we don't move not because we won't succeed. 
in our own minds we have defeated ourselves and said listen there's just no point even taking the first step you know if we were to take a step back and reflect on our own lives that one conversation which either somebody had with us or we had with someone which made a difference makes us understand and realize the power of one that one family member or friend you know who reached out to us when we really needed help or whom we reached out to and came back saying what a big difference it made to their life makes us realize the power and the value of the power of one that one creative imaginative idea which comes up in a discussion let's say at the workplace and which actually takes the company into a different direction or to a different level without even realizing the power of what was being said at that time but we just decided to act on it and move ahead can uh, you know catapult us and th- then we realized the power of one that one thing said kind of the penny dropped and we uh, you know did something which significantly changed us so i think it's not only thinking about the power of one but also internally believing that even as an individual i'm powerful but the trick lies in not freezing not stopping not overthinking but keep moving oh, amazing there is something you like have you had this feeling at any time where you felt really you know insignificant powerless um, and how do you actually overcome that difference so let me share two experiences one in a personal Uh, society context and one was in a business context i remember uh, i was once walking out from our building gate and we the pavement just uh, outside our building the municipal corporation was constructing a structure over there and, and i was like terrified i'm like these guys are putting up something right outside our building on the pavement and i said this is bad news for us so i went back into the building immediately called up the secretary i said listen what's going on why are these guys constructing this over here so he said look you know these uh, bmc guys have said that they need something called a master chokey which is a place where all the all the bmc guys meet uh, for their uh, waste management and other services so they have these little master chokeys in different areas i said listen if this is going to happen outside our building this this is going to be chaos for us not a happy situation so i drove straight to the ward office i walked in and i reached the ward officer's office and outside his office was this his assistant was sitting there i said i want to meet the ward officer he saying nahi appointment nahi aapka so i said nahi appointment nahi hai thoda urgent hai he saying nahi abhi saab ke se nahi milta abhi ye time nahi hai milne ka time is between so and so and so and so or you come tomorrow or you write a letter and you take an appointment very typical government attitude and i remember standing there saying that look this is the system against me right uh david and goliath i just walked past that assistant and before he could react i just barged into the ward officer's office so he looked up from his table fortunately there was nobody else in his cabinet he wasn't in a meeting or something so i said uh, i'm really sorry but i need to talk to you so he looks at me he says look you look like a decent person but this is no way to walk into somebody's office i said i know that but it's an emergency if it wasn't an emergency i would not have done this i know what i'm doing is impolite but trust me this is an easy what's the matter then i walked him through the matter he saying yeah but your building is not taking care of the pavement and therefore we are taking it away from you and we're going to build a master chokey i said look there is a place for your master chokey somewhere else let me show you where you can build it and i promise you within 30 days the pavement outside our building will be the most beautiful spot in kaf parade long story short he gave me a jeep with two of his officers they came i showed them where we they could relocate they agreed we then got someone to immediately plant lovely trees and you know and now they are happy we are happy and we have a fabulous uh, garden over there so that was my one experience when i felt helpless but i said i'm not going to give up the second was when i started my new business and it was a new range of industrial fasting products in india 
And Ajit, I visited 400 dealers in India across six cities and I wasn't able to set up one dealer because whoever I went to said that we don't know this product. And, said, and I said, that's exactly why I'm coming to you because we're going to popularize this in India and I need someone in your city to be our distributor. I wasn't able to convert one dealer. So I was again feeling helpless, lonely, but not defeated. And I think that was the difference. I said, look, there is a solution. It's just that it's going to take longer than I thought. So what we did was we pivoted to a direct model, started selling directly to end customers, started building a bit of a brand and packaging around our products, built a small sales team who went directly to factories. And sure enough, within 12 to 24 months, we started getting a backward call from dealers saying, hey, you had come and met us sometime back. Now we're getting some inquiries. And again, long story short, we're market leaders in that space. But only because I believed in the power of one and I said, it doesn't matter how big the challenge, no matter how helpless I'm feeling, my ability to overcome a problem is always bigger than the problem. Amazing. Too good, yeah. You know, it's, it's just fantastic, you know, that, you know, this whole power of one can be such a game changer sometimes. And, uh, and I, you know, to, to just uh, even share an experience, you know, I actually uh, are part of various entrepreneurial groups. And, uh, you know, what you do is often sometimes when you land up in a problem, you feel that helplessness and you will say that, oh, my God, I don't think this is going to happen. Or, you know, the standard problem is, you know, it just doesn't work here. I'm in that industry. It just doesn't work. You can't fix it. And you come to terms with it till someone just steps in and says that, you know what, let's meet up. Let's discuss. Uh, I have no stakes in this, but uh, let me see if I can see the gaps in the whole thing. You know that that one person can be a game changer yeah. because you 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 kind of are so closed down in your thoughts and it's not your fault because that's what you do morning to evening. But the guy who's the new guy who just comes across and who sees it differently helps you actually navigate that completely. And you know that that one person makes that big difference. And I, and and that's what happened with me when I was actually at my low. You stepped in. You saw it differently. And then it, I could just completely reinvent myself post that. And I said that, yeah, you know, I need to look at it completely differently, even to the extent of shutting down what I was doing and starting something new, which is, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't do it. And I think that power of one just makes sometimes different. And I think everyone should get that opportunity. And the best way I have discovered that today is by stepping out for someone else. You know, yeah. can I be there? Can I be their power of one? And, uh, Get, you don't need anything back, but sometime, you know, what goes around comes around. No, but Ajit, I remember you sharing with me the uh, whole experience of your rata. The trade association, when you took over, was of a certain size and impact. And then you decided that, okay, maybe along with a few people, but you're going to take this to the next level. And it was your dedication, hard work, perseverance. And now I believe it's a very big... Uh, trade association with a lot of uh, clout. And again, it was a power of one where you, said, where you said, I'm going to do this. So that's a fact. I mean, because at that time, we just realized that, you know, in the entire value chain, the MSMEs had no voice. Mm. And I said, I was an MSME and every one of us mm. was just cribbing, you know, we are all working in silos. Mm. So I said, mm -hmm. hey, let's do something different about it. Let's fix a problem rather than sitting on the wall and cribbing about it. And let's go and dirty our hands. Yeah. Just picked up like-minded four or five people and that's it. We never look back. But, you know, it's it was a 10-year long journey. But we made it happen. And it's such a powerful body and it's institutionalized. So you don't have to even be there. There are bigger people and better people now managing that organization. And that's that's fantastic. And I think wow. and I think that's that's a lovely feeling. And so that power of one is truly, truly, truly uh, engaged, you know very important you know and this is one thing that vivek i always wanted to know about this you know uh, was there, are there any life examples where how do you think individual actions contribute to a kind of a larger social or uh, environmental change you know we tend to sometimes narrow our thought processes only to a business or to a family environment but the big impact on a larger social or environmental changes do you think individual actions make a difference? Do you have a life example around it? Yeah. So before I share uh, the examples, again, two things, you know, change happens when there are two things in place. One is there is a wantingness and a willingness 
to do something uh, and bring about a change. Okay, that wantingness has to be there. That I want this change. And second is the willingness to say that I'm willing to do whatever it takes and put some energy behind it. Very often we have the energy, but we don't have the desire. Very often we have the desire, but we self-doubt uh, ourselves and you know get defeated internally before we even start. So I think the combination of wanting to and willing to, to me, is what creates the power of one. So we were fresh out of college. We were 12 of us. And, you know, we, was, we would meet our friends. We were 21 years old at that time. And we saw around us that students in Bombay and youngsters in Bombay our age, now I'm talking about 1990, were typically, and we're talking about South Bombay, the typical attitudes were, attitude was that I have a good education, I have a good family, I probably have a good career and a job in front of me. I really don't care what's going on in the country. That's not my problem. So we just sensed a lot of apathy in people around us. It's like, I'm comfortable, I don't care a damn. And of course, that was a time when there was no social media, no phones, internet was not, I mean, no mobile phones, no internet. And 12 of us said, okay, look, we need to break this apathy. Now, these are 12 youngsters who put 100 rupees each and started an organization called AYBI, Association of Youth for a Better India, right? 12 kids in South Bombay saying we want to build a better India. But we actually did form that organization. It ran successfully for 12 years. We sparked off various initiatives, including waste management. We were one of the first in 1992 to talk about segregation of garbage, right? Which was 32 years back. Today, the government is talking about making it mandatory. But we talked about this 32 years ago. We visited Devna dumping ground when Bombay was generating 6,000 tons of garbage. And we explained to the BMC then that we are heading for a crisis in you know the next 10, 15 years. Now they're talking about, we need to shut this dumping ground. We need to do something else, make it a sanitary landfill and all of that. So in and through that initiative, Ajit, we had more than 400 people who went through the AYB experience. We sparked off various initiatives. And the whole concept of active citizenship uh, became a, you know, a kind of a strong word with people who came uh, in our contact. What difference did we make? I don't know in the larger picture. I'm sure we did at some level. But I know these 400 people who went through the AYB experience are change agents wherever they are in life today. The second is in our own organization. Again, you know, I personally, I look at the situation in the country. I look at the challenges people live with, work with. And I'm like, what can I do about it? But then the thought came that at least I can do something for these people who work with us in our organization. So whether it be serving a five o'clock snack because they are hungry after lunch and they won't reach home till eight o'clock or giving medical uh, insurance to people, giving housing loans, funding and sponsoring their education in the company if they want to study further, uh, you know, giving paternity leave to the men so that they can stay home with their wife and kids and take care of them. I mean, these are again, small ways in which one company can make a difference and can influence at least the people who work with them. So, I mean, just to sum it up, I think we often underestimate the power of one. And sometimes all it takes is one. Amazing is that. Well, that was a provoking decision here with some deep insights. But that's all the time that we have for this episode. So certainly, uh, it, it's, it's enough to give everyone a thought. Think about it, what we spoke today. And we want to encourage you not to just keep with these ideas to yourself, share this episode with your friends, colleagues and family and ask them, what do you think? Spark a conversation and see where it leads. And we'd love to hear from you. Join the dialogue on our social media platforms. Share your questions, your learnings and the insights you have gained from this episode. It's through these shared experiences and perspectives that we all grow and learn together. So don't hesitate to reach out and contribute to this ongoing conversation. The voice matters in shaping a better, ethically driven business world. That's it for today. And join us again next week for another enriching episode of Life.TV. 
where we continue our exploration into the fascinating world of exploring values in our lives. And Vivek, thank you very much. Uh, it's as usual, every episode is invaluable. And, uh, and I'm sure we've started a conversation. We've got a people to talk about it. And uh, next week, we're looking forward to diving deeper into these critical discussions. So see you next week when we unravel more insights and perspectives that shape our ethical compass. Thank you for listening. And remember to reach out to your friends and get a conversation going on life exploring values. Thank you, Vivek. As usual, great to have you with us. Thanks, Ajit. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye.